In the current NBA, the emergence of positionless basketball has made two-way players and versatile wings sought after commodities. A 6'8", 225-pound forward from Florida State, Patrick Williams has shot up draft boards throughout the year, largely due to his versatility and high ceiling on both ends of the court. The shot clock. Bowden will have to create. Got it taken away. Whoa! Welcome into another edition of the Prospect Podcast. I'm Ethan Piotta, and today I'll be breaking down one of my favorite players in the 2020 NBA draft class, FSU's Patrick Williams. A former five-star recruit out of West Charlotte High School in North Carolina, Williams came into the year ranked 26th in his recruiting class per 247 Sports. Williams turned heads during his freshman campaign at FSU, showcasing on and off-ball defensive potential, self-creation ability, ridiculous overall athleticism, especially concerning his vertical pop, and flashes of operating as an efficient pick and roll ball handler in the half court. Ranked number eight overall on my latest and ever changing big board, Pat Will should be a consensus lottery pick in my opinion. Let's jump right into breaking down his game. Let's start off right away talking about Williams defensively. Arguably the biggest selling point of Pat Will as a prospect surrounds his defensive versatility. Here against Clemson, doesn't have the quickest feet, but is able to kind of mask that with good instinctual defensive habits in his strong wide frame. Three straight times here, Williams shuts down the isolation excellent job of beating the ball handler to the spot walling up and forcing the turnover again doesn't have the best mechanics as a point of attack defender yet but is able to kind of mask that based off sheer athleticism at this point pat will was one of the few players in college basketball this year that expressed ability or showed flashes of guarding positions one through five his mechanics as a point of attack defender aren't always there he tends to bounce instead of sliding defensively has a naturally high stance but he does cover a lot of ground and with limited spacing in college basketball and FSU being an extremely disciplined and strong defensive overall team, he got away with a lot. I think right away at the NBA level he'll have the ability if needed to switch on to quicker guards but should primarily be guarding threes and fours until he can develop his lateral quickness. However, I definitely think it's a positive and worth noting how much trust Leonard Hamilton had in Williams this year, sometimes primarily assigning him to the other team's top ball handler. You do see the downside of that here though, Williams matched up against Elijah Hughes and Hughes just straight beats him off the dribble at the end of the game with a full head of steam, gets the bucket. Still room for improvement for Pat Will here. Williams did average one steal and one block per game this year, kind of displaying his versatility as a wing defender and rim protector to a statistical view. Right here, spotlighted he is in the corner. This might be his best play of the entire season. Just watch how far Williams comes to make this steal out of Jordan Bowden's pocket. Tremendous instincts defensively, extremely intelligent play by Williams, kind of shows how much he understands off-ball defensive rotations and overall just wrecking havoc on that side of the floor. And then you've got a 6'8 human being coming at you in the open court, massacres SEC Defensive Player of the Year, Eve Pons with that dunk. And that's something you often saw, again, here he is in the open court, tremendous big time move from him. This is where you want to see Williams really take his game to the next level. He's got Joe Girard, a much smaller defender, on his hip. He's got to go up strong and finish that. Everything's good except the finish. Again, Williams' overall athleticism and long arms make him an extremely interesting off-ball defender at the next level. His ability to get into passing lanes can be an instant selling point for him to contribute on an NBA team from day one, and you hope to see more of it at the next level. Being 6'8", some have hypothesized that Williams could have the ability to play some valuable small ball minutes at the five spot in the NBA. His rim protection ability can certainly attest to this. He covers an immense amount of ground and has eye-opening pogo stick-like vertical pop. You see that there with him rotating from the three-point line to get the double block against Louisville. His load time between leaps is minimal as well, which is definitely beneficial for an undersized player. Again, here's another great example of the best of both worlds for Pat Will. Tremendous defensive versatility, grabs that block with his armpit, and this is one of my favorite plays of the entire season. Let's just spotlight those two players. Those are the only two people important here. Actually, an excellent pass from Cole Anthony as well, but Pat Will rotates from West Charlotte High School to grab this chase down bucket saving block ridiculous stuff from him there on the offensive side of things williams showed intriguing flashes and a relatively translatable skill set but he still has a ways to go one of his biggest swing skills in my opinion is the development of his catch and shoot outside shot per synergy williams ranked in the 58th percentile on unguarded catch and shoot opportunities which is pretty average he shot 32% from three on just 1.7 attempts per game this year and is still not much of a threat as an off-movement shooter based on his average release time and overall struggle to get, generate much separation from his defender. 
However, this is an encouraging sign here from Williams off the pass from Trent Forrest. His release is actually fairly aesthetically pleasing, and he tends to do a solid job of setting his feet and repeating his mechanics. This is an excellent relocation from Williams to the corner here, and something that will definitely translate well if he can add consistency. The most impressive part of Pat Will's offensive skill set this year revolved around his self-creation ability in the half court. Whether it was off contested mid-range pull-ups, fadeaways, and or spin floaters, Williams showed an understanding of how to score and to get to his spots in a half court setting against both man and zone defensive looks. Williams' elevation and body control on some of the mid-range shots he took stood out on tape as it was definitely encouraging to see him hunting for his shot. Specifically here as the pick and roll ball handler, Williams showed an understanding of how to use, set up, and wait for a screen in the half court. He was able to attack angles off the pick and roll to get his own shot and use his scoring gravity to draw multiple defenders and find the open man. Here we see Williams, again, wait for the screen from Dominic Alinichuk and hunt for his own shot off the pick and roll, a contested mid-range fadeaway jumper. Very encouraging signs here from the freshman. A move that was extremely successful was Williams' one dribble reverse spin into a floater as well, aside from the mid-range. You see that multiple times here in this segment. Although Pat Will will probably not be able to use his size as effectively to gain separation from defenders in the NBA, he may be able to use his speed to create mismatches against bigs on the perimeter. Nevertheless, it's a positive indicator that he expressed the ability to simply get to his spots at the collegiate level and score effectively. Going hand in hand with Williams' self-creation ability in the half court comes his scoring gravity and the skill he has of creating for his teammates. First off, out of the pick and roll this time, Williams finds Alinechek on the lob again. His in-between game efficiency draws two defenders and he's able to find Dominic for the easy lob. He shows signs of a less athletic yet better shooting Josh Smith as a pick and roll ball handler. This right here from coast to coast is a tremendous live dribble left handed bounce pass from Williams in the open court. Williams tends to always seemingly make the right pass, here finding Devin Vassell on a nice one too. In the full court as well, Williams' vision is really advanced for a player of his size, as he's able to whip the cross-court dime to Anthony Polite in the corner here. The playmaking aspect of Williams' game is yet to reach its full potential, but if it's further unlocked and developed, it could turn into a scary new dimension of his game. Again, still 18 years old and listed at 6'8", 225 pounds, coupled with the athleticism Williams has, the most feasible NBA role he should take on throughout his first few years in the league should be as a multi-dimensional slasher, ever improving in his surrounding areas. Williams is a tremendous two-foot leaper, getting off the ground extremely fast and exploding vertically. He can finish with either hand and utilizes a nice array of pump fakes and quick movements to generate space down below. Here, Trent Forrest drives baseline. This is an excellent AB line cut from Williams just instinctively, and it's something he didn't do enough of during the season. He can be extremely effective as a cutter using these ghost cuts with a full head of steam, based off his good hands and quick vertical leaping ability. Although I do believe Williams could succeed as a slasher right away, he does tend to occasionally go up soft and shade from contact instead of initiating contact in both the open court and half court. Per Bart Torvik, Williams was 25 of 32 on dunk attempts this year. He also shot just 50% on 158 attempts from close two point range. There is room for improvement for him as a finisher for sure. He showed flashes of being able to use his strength and playmaking ability to attack closeouts, though in limited fashion. He doesn't necessarily finish above the rim all the time yet, but some posterizing dunks and the athleticism he occasionally shows lead me to believe he can develop this part of his game. It could very well be a case of Williams just not realizing his athletic capabilities to their fullest extent yet. He's solid and active on the offensive glass, but still leaves more to be desired. All in all, with his size and natural athletic ability, improvement is still needed, and he's still pretty raw as a finisher and in a few of these areas. Overall, Patrick Williams is one of the most interesting prospects in the 2020 NBA Draft. His potential and high ceiling on both sides of the court could turn him into one of the better players in the class. It's all going to come down to how well he develops, concerning his outside shot, foot speed, and as a finisher. Big wings are a luxury in the current NBA. You need 2-3 to three big wings to even have a chance to stop guys like LeBron, Kawhi, Kevin Durant, and other potent mid-range, 3-level scorers. Williams' defensive versatility isn't common amongst 18-year-old kids. He's one of the youngest players in the draft, and his well-rounded game could eventually make him one of the best. 
And if you made it this far, thank you so much. Please consider liking and subscribing. Leave a comment, let me know what I could do better. This is my first one of these. Uh, worked really hard on it, trying to get a little bit better at it, so we'll see how the reception goes and I'll see if I can make some more. Uh, in the meantime, follow me on Twitter at Ethan Pio to follow the Prospect Podcast at Prospect Pod on Twitter for strictly scouting analysis, NBA draft takes, and I'll catch you guys next time.